I want to ask our next speaker, Gabor, ba Gabor Forkach, come out here and tell me, how long will it be until you can print me a spare part? <laughs> that depends what spare part you're thinking about. <laughs> So what can I add to all this wonderful printing talks and everything that is happening in three dimensions while well, try to do something that has not yet been discussed? So when we enthusiastically chew on our steak <laughs> or proudly wear a leather jacket, we very seldom think about the place of their common origin, and that is the slaughterhouse. Now, you wonder why I'm the last speaker before lunch. <laughs> That's what it looks like. This is usually a remote, guarded, hidden facility, not too happy facility, neither for the animals that are there, nor for the people who work there. So imagine a world where leather and meat could be made without killing a single animal and doing no harm to the environment. Did you know that today on this planet, we, the seven billion people, share this planet with 60 billion animals? And those numbers by 2050, respectively, are going to be nine billion and 100 billion. And what we forget in this process is that the animals that live on the same planet as we, they are not only sources of our dairy products, meat, and leather goods, but they are the consumers of the same resources what we use. Land, water, and as Naveen Jain said yesterday, they are polluters they are contributing to greenhouse gas emission to a large extent. Something is wrong. This cannot go on forever. We have to do something about it. There must be something. And maybe, indeed, there is something. So a few years ago, we developed a technology to print three-dimensional functional living structures, such as tissues and organs, and uh, we just implanted them into animals, and they are now also ready to be implanted into human beings. And that technology, I will hopefully convince you, that can be also applied to making meat and leather. Now, I'm going to talk about leather, mostly, and I'll get back to the meat issue, perhaps, at the end. So we're going to go here for a ride, and I'll tell you how we are making genuine leather, really genuine leather. So the technology that I was alluded to, this three-dimensional printing or other bioassembly method, are really in the realm of tissue engineering or more generally, biofabrication. And uh, the, 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 the progress in this field in the last few years was spectacular. New organs have been, new tissues, new organs have been built, such as uh, uh, windpipes, bone, uh, skin, and many others. Well, here is a human ear. Across the world, in many, many laboratories, and implanted into recipients, helping to improve on the quality of life of many, many, many patients. So why not use this ability of ours to make meats, build meats, and leather? After all, those are tissues. And so that's what uh, we embarked on a few years ago when we said, OK, if we can build medical-grade tissues, we should be able to build leather and meat, uh, those are tissues as well, post-mortem tissues, but they start out, obviously, as, as living tissues. So how do we do it? So we go back to the very fundamental components 
of any tissue, and those are the living cells. And here is the process. So we take a few cells, a few million cells, through a harmless biopsy from the animal. We grow those cells up in the laboratory or in a plant to the necessary desired numbers. And during this process, when those cells are growing and multiplying, they are secreting a material that is one of the most important components of skin and the most the signature component of leather, and that's the protein collagen. And once we have sufficient collagen, the cells secreted this collagen, we take this collagen, we make them into sheets, we stack the sheets on top of each other into thicker sheets, we couple the adjacent sheets, and then finally we take this multi-layered skin and tan it, and then we arrive at leather. Now, this process has several distinguishing features that really distinguish it from the traditional way of making leather. First of all, after the biopsy, the animal is a happy camper, lives a happy life. In fact, we can take the same animal later and use it for sourcing cells again. So we need fewer animals and we need much less resources. So we already save a lot there. Importantly, all this process can be carried out under the same roof in one facility, in an environment which is transparent, clean. Imagine you tour such a facility. You see every step of the biofabrication process from the moment the cells are put into uh, the appropriate environment and then growing up. This could be fantastically educational. And this is something you would never be able to do in an abattoir. So, what, there are other biofabrication processes that we are very familiar with uh, that are more transparent. So, for example, beer brewing. Now uh, you go to a, uh, a pub today and, and you can see really the, uh, how the beer is, is, is made. So, or yogurt making, it's another thing. It's also a biofabrication process, old biofabrication processes. So those big tanks here in this brewery are used for fermentation. It's a bio process. So imagine those tanks, instead of being used for brewing beer, brewing cells, multiplying cells. It's a clean facility. It would be a pleasure to work there. And so there is a way of producing this leather. And um, let me show you a few examples of what we have been able to make. So this is genuine leather, fresh from the laboratory. And this leather has many distinct properties that industrial leather actually doesn't. So first of all, this is unblemished. This is, this is uh, uniform. In contrast, the leather that we obtain from the skin of an animal often is damaged. The, the skin of the animal itself, the hide, is damaged. It's damaged because the animal collides with barbed wires because of insect bites or because of abuse. We can make this leather into anything we want. This leather, um, uh, other than, than being made from the, the, the cells that originally are at the heart of making uh, the skin and then after that the leather, we can make it in, in various shapes uh, the, the, the hide of an animal has irregular shape, and because of the irregular shape and the inhomogeneities, the different parts of that hide have this different physical properties. That makes certain applications very cumbersome. We don't have that problem. We make this leather just in the quantity that we need and just for what we want to make. So, for example, this bracelet. This bracelet was made from that 
leather that I showed you on the previous slide. Because of this leather being homogeneous, we don't need, to, for example, to use the same toxic uh, tanning processes that industrial leather production and industrial leather manufacturing needs to use. So we're again polluting much less the environment. So it just happens that I have a few samples in my hand. And uh, I can show it to you if technology allows. So we can make the leather thinner. Can you see that? Uh, it's not that easy to see, I guess. So this is a very thin leather, and this is a thicker leather. This is a transparent leather. This is more opaque. And depending on how many layers of those collagens we put together, we can make leather to our specifications um, uh, depending on what the customer wants. Now, I also should say that when we take the biopsy from the animal, that animal can be a cow, that animal can be a calf, or any bovine-like animal, but it could be a pig, it could be an elephant. That depends on what you want. So, finally, let me show you something that, that really the industrial leather production is not capable of doing. Uh, well, this is, this is actually a video that will show you maybe a feel for what kind of material this, this is. And I'll, I'll just let you enjoy the, the video for a moment. Imagine a blouse or a shirt made from this material. This is silk-like, except that it has leather-like qualities. So, the, as I said, leather is, is fundamentally made of collagen. Now, there are many types of collagen, and they come in our body in various mixtures. And uh, the properties of leather depend on the type of collagen and on the mixture of various collagens. So the reason why calf leather is much more, much softer than that from an adult, an adult animal is precisely because the composition of this collagenous material in a calf, in the young animal, is different from that in the adult. And the specialized cells that in the skin make the collagen are not necessarily the best sources of collagen but the industry doesn't have access to anything else because they slaughter the animals and then they just take the skin of the animal and that's what they end up with. That's their source. Now, we, on the other hand, we can source any kind of cells that make massive quantities of collagen. And in fact, there are cells that make better collagen and in a, in a, in a more optimal composition even for, for leather production. So those are the kinds of things that we can do. So we can mimic nature, but we can also go beyond nature and hopefully make uh, uh, producing this leather that humanity has been enjoying for many, many hundreds of years in a different way. Uh, this is not, I just pushed the button inadvertently, so I'm going to go back. I'm not yet thanking your, your, your attention. So I mostly talked about uh, leather, but we are able to make meat as well. Moreover, as I mentioned, the technology that we came up with a few years ago, bioprinting, and here I have to uh, spend a few seconds on, on, on explaining the difference between printing, 3D printing a plastic object or, say, a blood vessel, which we can do. That's not, those are not the same things. A bioprinter that is able to, to print living material has to have even more stringent conditions imposed on it than something that prints plastic. And so 
Today, we are able to print, as I said, blood vessels, nerve grass, all kinds of tissues. And recently, the company, the first company that we formed around those ideas, in the name of Organovo, was able to come up with a liver construct that is made from your own cells, so from the patient's own cell, and that construct can be used to test drugs. So we are moving to the optimal, optimally patient-tailored drug development. That's where this technology is going today. But at some point, I hope, we will be able to print organs. Well, it's going to happen a little bit later, so just don't drink that much so that your liver is OK, or don't smoke that much so that your lung is OK, but it will come. And so the question is, how long do we want to live? We will be able to replace your body parts. Well, I leave this to you. Uh, that's, let me just come back to biofabricating animal products. So I think that what I, hopefully I, I managed to convince you that we can make leather without killing the animals. So we are ushering in, I think, today a biofabrication process to make animal products in an entirely new way. It's a new era. And um, uh, I think this is perhaps an inescapable future of mankind. We can't live with slaughtering the animals all the time. So hopefully this is a way, a way that is different from present day uh, methods of, of making leather. It is, it is a method, it is an approach that is environmentally friendly and responsible, scalable, and ultimately more humane. Thank you.